is obviously establishing the strike zone and, and finding a way to hit that zone well. She throws high speed. She's east to west. So again, establishing that strike zone on that good curve that she throws is going to be key. And then I want to see her throw some more change-ups today. I thought it was effective yesterday, but I think she could use it a little bit more, and she might need to against the good Virginia Tech team here. Head coach for the Virginia Tech Hokies is Pete Demore. Congratulations, Coach Demore. He just had his uh, birth of his son, Roe, this week. So he hasn't had much sleep with his team traveling across the country from Blacksburg all the way here to Tempe. But uh, he is doing his best on very little sleep. Let's take a look at the Capital One lineup. And Kelsey Bennett. Jenny, she's the one who had a solo home run yesterday for the Hokies. Yeah, and right there in the middle of the lineup. And one thing that I like about Virginia Tech, I thought they looked like the most complete team offensively because they were able to kind of produce all the way through the lineup. Again, that's how you win championships. That's how you get through. And I, I thought they did a really good job executing. So today that is going to be key to, to kind of continue that streak. So leading things off for the Hokies will be the left fielder, Kelsey Brown. Lopez starts this game off with a strike. Based off of seeding, these were two teams, the number one and number two seeds here in this region. So you had to figure they were on a collision course at some point. Here they are finding themselves in the winner's bracket. And that's Maddie Hackbarth behind the plate for Arizona State. I apologize there. Uh, good news for Sun Devil fans. She came out of the game yesterday, wasn't feeling well. Uh, head coach Trisha Ford said she just wanted to protect her for the weekend. Back in the starting lineup today. Ground ball to the right side, fielded by Chapman. Race to first base, and Brown with a head first slide beats it out. Virginia Tech starting off the game with a loud first single. I have to say, I love the way Brown plays the game. She does a beautiful job utilizing the ground in her speed. She is so fast, and she does anything she can to get there. I think phenomenal attempt, phenomenal at bat to just start this game. Now, she is a threat to steal a perfect 30 of 30 on the season. There's a ground ball to third baseman Loomis as Fagan grounds out, but moves Brown down to second. Look at the ASU defense. Harper, Hackbarth, Jill in the outfield. Loomis, Torres, Price, Chapman, and the other twin, Maddie. As we said, Hackbarth is behind the plate. is Alexa Milius, the designated player for Virginia Tech. Already with an early chance to drive in an RBI with Brown on at second. All-speed pitch is in there by Lopez. And again, it's a good changeup. It curves a little bit into a righty. And super effective. Virginia Tech is aggressive at first pitch swinging, especially so far here at the beginning of this game. And introducing changeups just like that, that's going to keep these batters enough off balance that they're going to have to sit on it a little bit more, It'll make her fast stuff a little bit more effective. All right, so she just threw two. Does she go three in a row here? If you trust it, I'm I'm watching this at bat, and I'm thinking I might. If I had a changeup uh, like Lopez, I would. And, and no doubt, I, I, think, one and two. I think you expect to see it at some point in this at bat still, especially against a good Milius. Hard hit up the middle. That one gets through. Brown 
Rounding third, coming home. She's going to score, and Virginia Tech gets on the board first with an RBI single by Alexa Milius. Milius just a great at bat. Brown with so much speed. When you're at second base and you see a hit, make it to the outfield, forget about it. You're not going to slow down. You're going to keep going at your top speed. Was Jamie Bailey in the cleanup hit uh, spot in the lineup? At first base, she is a really good defender. And Coach B. Moore said she saved a bunch of game for us just in the field. And what a good sign for the Hokies. The bats were a little quiet early on yesterday, but here in this first inning, Virginia Tech strikes first. And I think you set the tone in the first inning, always offensively. And when you can really jump on a pitcher and put the ball in play this early, 100%, not only is it good for your defense to start on defense with the lead, but you're bringing confidence already to a team. Ooh, that changeup is filthy. Bailey had no chance of hitting that. And when you have a great changeup and you can make batters just out on that front foot and almost look silly, to me, great job by Lopez. If you can own that, throw it over and over again. That one hit her. Bailey appeared to lean in a little bit, but that one looked like it hit her on her left arm. Yeah, loading here out on her front foot, but nowhere for Bailey really to go. I was definitely in the batter's box when it hit her. So coming up to the plate is Kelsey Bennett, the shortstop. And this is what she did yesterday to the deepest part of the ballpark. Just aggressive swinging by Bennett. Obviously has the power, has been swinging the bat really well as of late. Peaking at the right time here in the postseason. So Maya Luca will be the pinch runner at second base for Alexa Milius. So Lopez pitched a complete game yesterday, about 130 pitches. What does it take to bounce back and start the next day? I think you just have to build on what you've been doing. They, excuse me, Bennett goes the other way. That one gets through the infield. And now they've got the runner, Luco, in a rundown. Luco coming home. She'll be tagged out by Hackbarth. Man, let's take another look. And Luco getting to third and rounding it. Good throw from Hill to get the ball back. And by then, Luco too far off the base. Heads up by Bennett, uh, uh, Bailey, excuse me, to get all the way to third base, knowing that Luco likely would have been out trying to make an attempt at home. But kind so of a base down. running mishap. Two down for the freshman, Addie Green, at second base today. Green was two for three yesterday with an RBI. And just like we talked about, John, using that change up more at the beginning of this game here. I think is key for Lopez, and the key then is then mixing the pitches and hitting the corners well enough. That one is hit well down the right field line. It's going to go all the way to the wall. One run will score. Two runs come in, and Virginia Tech starts this game off strong, three to nothing over Arizona State. 
you almost get the feeling that the Hokies were waiting for this game, waiting to face Lopez. This a squared up pitch, beautifully hit on the inside part of the plate, turned on, and the excitement and energy that Addie Green brings and drove in two runs as well. Her 10th double of the season gives the Hokies a three nothing lead. Here comes the right fielder, Emma Ritter. And you can see the Hokies, they're ready to swing at that first pitch. Yeah, I think you have to be. Again, pitchers, their goal is to get ahead of the count. So if you know the first or second pitch of every at-bat is likely going to be one of your best pitches that you're going to see all day, especially against a good moving pitcher like Lopez, then you sit on one of those two pitches and drive it. That's what we've seen Virginia Tech do. Ritter one for two yesterday. She was able to single in her first at bat. And how about this? Already double barrel action going in the Arizona State bullpen. And on the flip side, John, how about Keely Richard watching from the dugout right now as her offense spots her a three run lead so far before she even steps foot on the field. We're talking ACC Pitcher of the Year who doesn't need run support, but she already <laughs> has three runs before she steps in the circle. Well, something you this pointed out from yesterday, the, the concern for you was the balls to strikes ratio. What do you think about what Lopez has been doing today? Yeah, I mean, I think she actually has been mixing her pitch as well. I think you have to credit Virginia Tech because Virginia Tech has been hitting pitches that are anywhere near the zone, and they've been driving them. And I think the hard part is trying to figure out what is the best sequence of pitches for Lopez here against a, a really tough Virginia Tech offense right now. I mean, this pitch was down and in on the corner, but I think it could have stood to be just a ball lower, ball distance lower. But it was on the corner. It could be a little bit more inside. And that's the key, you can't fall over the plate. Three and one count on the freshman Ritter. The coaching staff has been trying to get her out of her pattern and hitting the ball on the ground. They wanted to get it up in the air a little bit. but they think this freshman has a ton of potential. Green is the runner on at second. Two down here in the top of the first. Here's the payoff pitch. Grounded to the left side, backhanded by Loomis. And no play. Clean defense has got to be key. Loomis goes to field that, just pops out of her glove, and then unfortunately, as she goes down to grab it, kind of kicks it more towards the foul line. No play for Ritter. But those are must-have moments. Those are balls where your pitcher has worked to get a ground ball, and you have to get an out. Those are, are key moments here when we get into the postseason. That play was ruled an error by Loomis. Kenzie Lauder, the catcher. Doesn't offer it that two enough. Ritter on at first, Green on at second. The 2-0. That curveball. That Lopez throws on that inside corner to a righty. If she can locate that well, I think that's her best bet against these teams. Keep it on the inside corner. Excuse me, these hitters. Keep it on that inside corner. Make them turn on it. Make them work for it. That is such a tough <laughs> pitch to hit. I mean, the, the, the speed difference alone and then the break at the end, that is just nice. 
Yeah, it's the break that gets me too. The fact that it just kind of cuts right at that last second. Have a little bit of change up MB. But Lopez finds herself in the circle in another full count. Water pops it up. Shallow left field, the center fielder Hackbar comes on. But Virginia Tech starts this one off strong. A 3-0 lead. Arizona State coming up to the plate. That's coming up for the first time here as we move to the bottom of the first in the circle. Keely Richard was spectacular, even though she didn't have her best stuff. A three-hit complete game win for Virginia Tech. Yeah, she mixed her pitches beautifully. She's got that curveball that cuts across, but her rise that starts low and jumps up has nasty jump to it. When you have a pitch that goes up in that zone and you get batters to fish for it and they can't get their barrel on top, you become super successful. You see that 306 strikeouts, a lot in credit to the fact that she has that rise ball and that 1.14 ERA as well. Upper 60s, again, we talked about that low rise at the knees. She can just hit every single one of her pitches coming in on the same plane, and they cut different ways. Pretty incredible. Trisha Ford, head coach for Arizona State in her fourth year, said the key to this team, we have to control our emotions and be mentally prepared. They came out strong yesterday after the game was tied and were able to figure out a way to win it. Let's see how they respond here down 3-0. Here's the Capital One starting lineup for Arizona State. Leading things off will be Kendra Hackbart in center field. Rashard, the ACC Pitcher of the Year, starts the game off with a high strike call. Okay, so you're talking low rise. If Rashard is going to get this call all day long, starting at the knees and jumping up, Arizona State is going to have a hard time. That is a hard pitch to hit. And she comes back off speed, quickly ahead, 0-2. Down to the right side, that one gets through as Hackbar leads off the game for Arizona State with a single. Take a look at the defense for the Hokies. Brown, Troll, Ritter out in the outfield. Fagan was the starting shortstop. She got injured earlier this season, missed 14 games. She got moved over to the third. Bennett switched over to short and was able to shore up the infield for the Hokies. Here's the right fielder, Jasmine Hill. Had a heck of a ball game yesterday. Two for three, scored twice. She was part of that early part of the lineup. Five walks they drew in the first inning against Southern Illinois. Richard really feeling it with that up spin. Hackworth did a good job getting on top, getting her barrel on top of a, a spinning up pitch for Hill and the rest of this lineup. That is the key. You've got to have quick hands to hit a rise ball and to get on top of it and drive it. That ball just keeps rising. <laughs> this is a good sign if you're Virginia Tech and you're looking at Richard. I think the movement that we've seen just in the first two batters, in spite of the fact that Hackbar did get a hit, we're seeing a lot more movement in these first two batters than I, I feel like we saw yesterday. Shard is a finalist for USA Softball Collegiate Player of the Year. That just tells you she's one of the best players in the country. She has seven no-hitters in her career, including two no-hitters this season alone. So Maddie Hackbarth steps up. She was pulled from the game yesterday, wasn't feeling well. Head coach Trisha Ford wanted to make sure she was going to be able to go for the rest of this weekend. She got the start behind the plate today. Go! 
And I think the dynamic of, of losing a Hackbarth in a game that's important is twofold because you've got the one who controls the game behind the plate that she's now sitting out, but also her bat to not have it in the lineup can really hurt Arizona State. So her fighting through an illness right now is key. We got Kendra Hackbarth on at first. Her twin sister, Maddie Hackbarth, is up at the plate. What, what's it like? I know you played with your sister. What is it like being on the same team playing with your sister? I'll tell you what. They push each other's buttons. I know it because Trisha Ford said it. I know my sister and I did too. At some point, your sister is the only one that can tell you like it is. <laughs> and I think sometimes you need that. I, it, it's a weird uh, relationship that just anything can go. And uh, Coach Ford has talked about it with the two of them that they can be motherly, but they can push each other's buttons at the same time. Long delay with this 2-2 pitch for Richard. Just a little high off the corner. Wanted that one. There's mom and dad in the stands. They are proud. Okay, so your sister told you like it is. What was something she told you that nobody else would have been able to tell you? You know, my sister was a pitcher too. I, I can't pull anything right out, but sometimes it's just the presence of it. You know, that you go in and you have a bad game and you stand next to her and you just know. Like, she wants to tell you that you need to be better. <laughs> <laughs> That's all there is to it. We had a great relationship. I know the Hackbar sisters do as well. There's the payoff, and Rashard bringing the heat here in this first inning. Two strikeouts in a row. They bring up the shortstop, Alina Torres. One for three yesterday with an RBI and run scored. tells you that Keely Richard has a better feel for her pitches today. I just, I think the movement's better, the control looks better. And yesterday, it, it was interesting because she did only give up three hits, but you could tell that something was just not as sharp. More balls, I think, was the thing that stood out to me, that she threw more balls than she probably should have uh, and should have gotten a few more strikes. Today, I feel like she's just getting ahead of the batter and controlling the game so far this inning. But John, it's early in the game. I mean, anything can happen, mm -hmm. but but right now I just, I, I feel like walking into a game with a lead and you can take a deep breath and you can relax a little bit and you can just throw your game. And that's her job as a pitcher to just keep the team in the game. Keep that lead if she can. How much of yesterday was also postseason jitters? First game of the tournament, hadn't played in two years in postseason. 0-2 pitch, jam shot, third base on the short. Fagan on the run, tough play, nicely done. And Fagan continuing to show defense here in Tempe. What a play on the run for out number three. Our stack sports lineup continues tomorrow and throughout the weekend. The final two rounds of the PGA Championship are on ESPN with the early morning ESPN Plus coverage. The NBA playoffs start tomorrow afternoon. Two Eastern on ESPN. We'll have game one between the Celtics and Nets on ABC. That's at 8 Eastern. At the same time on ESPN, we'll have junior welterweight boxing, Jose Ramirez and Josh Taylor. And Sunday morning on ESPN2, the Grand Prix jump starts the day. What a lineup. I'm looking at that PGA Championship. Phil Mickelson, Arizona State of Love, leads the field right now at five under. Whew, it's a fun weekend. New pitcher in the circle for Arizona State, Cielo Meza, making her 18th appearance of the season. What do you think about this quick hook of Lindsay Lopez? Well, I think it was very clear that Virginia Tech was, was on Lopez. It was almost like they had scouted her enough to know what to attack for Meza. She's just got to keep them off balance. Maybe the one pitcher on this staff that has not really been scouted as much by Virginia Tech, and her low speed can change things up a little bit well. She's in the 59 to 62 range versus 
Lopez, who is high 60s. And just that speed change with kind of mixing her spin is going to be key. Bottom of the lineup for Virginia Tech, it'll be Darby Troll. Now, when the Hokies turn the lineup over and they come up to the plate for the second time, how do you make that adjustment when you are scouting a pitcher like Lindsey Lopez and then you go to a pitcher like Meza? I think you have to see pitches. The next batter up has to always sit and really evaluate the pitches as you come in. So Darby Troll here, who is the first batter up, needs to act almost like a leadoff hitter in the sense that you see pitches, you think about it, you come back in the dugout if you get out and talk about the pitches that you've seen. See Meza trying to live on that outside corner. Count is two balls, two strikes on Troll. Troll hits in the bottom of the lineup. They really like what she's been doing lately. This past month, she has been surging at the plate. Feel like she does a really good job turning the lineup owner. Over. Here's the full count payoff pitch is fouled out of play. If you've got a strong nine spot hitter, to me that's one of my favorite spots in the lineup. I know that sounds silly, but in that nine spot, if you have somebody that is that can make things happen. It just kind of sparks the top of your lineup. They're like a second igniter. You've got the top of the lineup that really brings it, but then that bottom can kind of add more fire. And Meza loses her. So ball four, Troll gets on with a walk, and top of the lineup coming up for Virginia Tech. Brown led things off in the first with a single. She would come around to score. And Coach Mesa. Moore said she is one of the fastest kids he has ever coached. Sorry about that. She's crazy fast, John. I, right? I, I, I'm just like sitting here waiting for her to put the ball in place so I can watch her run down the line. I, I love the speed that she has. And it's what really I love fun. about her is that her approach at the plate, she's always trying to use it. Like, she just yeah. wants to get the ball in play to just show you how fast she is. Well, and that's why she's at the top of this lineup, right? Because she makes things happen. She's kind of got a lot going for her and can do a lot there in the box. But she is smart enough to know that her speed is definitely a power tool. So when you've got a hitter like that who's already trying to get a head start down to first base, if you're the pitcher, where do you try to locate the pitch? Well, for me, I was always a fan of keeping it on the outside corner. I think you can see a lot of slappers tend to run towards first base, which is away from the plate. They've got to run towards the pitcher to hit that outside. And if you can get them to fish at that outside corner, I always feel like that's, that's your best chance. And also in this case, a drop ball would be key, but I think with somebody like Brown, who's so good at topping the ball and getting the bounce, I wouldn't throw her a drop. That ball's lifted in the air. The outfield was playing in, and it's at the warning track. It's going to get down. Rounding third is Troll. She's going to score. And Brown surprised everyone. Hit it over the outfielder's head for an RBI double. Well, that's kind of what we were just talking about. Brown can do anything. We've seen her utilize the infield ground in her speed, but why not just have power as well? Lifts this one all the way to the warning track as Brown just puts her rocket boosters in to get to second base. You've got a slapper with <laughs> warning track power and speed. Man, there's so much she can do. It's incredible. One and one on the count on Cameron Fagan. And this is what Coach Pete DeMore was telling us about in the dugout. He wants all of his players locked in, looking at the defensive alignment. The outfield was in, so Brown smartly knew she could lift the ball in the air over their head. 
Well, and I feel like you play the odds, right? In a lot of cases, when you're thinking about defensive shifts and changes, this is a batter who had been hitting infield ground balls the entire time. So why not take your outfield and push them in and, and have them shallow? Fagan lifts that one to left field. Harper makes the catch one away here in the top of the second. Pete DeMore is a new dad. A son row was born this week. Congratulations. A ton of his former players of Virginia Tech reached out to him this week. He said he appreciates all the support. He said even Virginia head softball coach reached out and sent him some videos on how to take care of a baby and get some sleep. So he appreciated the in-state love and uh, he just uh, loved the outpouring of support from everybody. Milius ahead in the count, 2-0. She drove in the first run of this game with a single in the first. What do you think about the body language from Meza? You could see a little frustration there as she missed low with that last pitch. Kicked the dirt, hung her head a little bit. Well, and you have to, I mean, you have to look at where Mesa is. She has thrown 49 innings here this season. She's definitely the third pitcher on this staff that really has not seen a lot of innings. And this is a big stage to really step in and try to quiet an, a good offense. Nice catch at, short, at second by Price. Two down now. And you've got to let your defense do the work this pitch over the plate, but Price gets off her feet. Able to glove that and get a big out. First baseman Jamie Bailey, she was hit by a pitch in the first inning when stranded at third. Mesa's pitches are tending to fall a little bit over the plate. I think that's why we saw Kelsey Brown hit the ball well. Um, and she has to be careful about bringing them too far over the plate. Bailey to center field. Catch is made by Hackbart. Virginia Tech with a 4-0 lead as we go to the bottom of the second. Welcome back to the NCAA Softball Championship presented by Capital One. We're here in the Tempe Regional at Tempe, Arizona. And the question everyone wants to know, what is going on with Allison Royalty? She is typically the number two starting pitcher on this team for Arizona State. We thought she might get the ball today. Lindsey Lopez got the ball, but then when Lopez got pulled, we thought for sure we'd see Royalty. We are not sure why she is not in this game. Yeah, you're talking about Lopez and Royalty who are kind of 50-50 on the majority of the innings here. Again, Meza only getting a small portion of them. So five, John, six, we, seven. We have not seen Royalty warm up yet this uh, regional. is Yanni Acuna, the designated player for the Sun Devils. Acuna with a half swing, and that one gets out of play. Acuna was the one with the big hit in the first inning. After all those walks, she stepped up and just laced a two RBI double in her first at bat. Rashard ahead in this count, 0-2. Got that outside corner. 
If she's going to get that today, it is going to be a long afternoon for Arizona State. 100%. This is a beautiful corner. This is a pitcher's pitch corner, though, as that ball barely grabs the corner. If you can get a called strike three there, I say it all the time, you push that corner as much as you possibly can. Third strikeout of the afternoon for Keely Richard. And up steps left fielder McKenna Harper. Harper was 0 for 2 yesterday. Two walks, she came around to score. speed pitch <laughs> is just scary. I love it. I love it. Rashard again, just all business in her face, just doing her job. But I, I like what she's doing today. She is just absolutely hitting her spots beautifully and making her pitches move. And that changeup, you're right, John. It's awesome. That one is well hit. Out in the left center field, and it is gone. McKenna Harper with the smile as she rounds the bases, puts Arizona State on the board for the first time. And as Virginia Tech's lead is now four to one. And that's a little bit of adrenaline that Arizona State may need. This pitch didn't move as much as most of Richard's pitches, a little too far over the corner of that plate. And McKenna Harper capitalizes on it, drives it over that fence. Another dangerous hitter stepping up, Danae Chapman, the first baseman. One for four with an RBI yesterday. We saw yesterday, John, a strike zone that was kind of all over the place, maybe really squeezed. And you're looking at a strike zone today. Kind of all over the place? <laughs> okay, a that lot of all That's over kind. the place. <laughs> <laughs> and you're talking about a strike zone this time, which to me is more of a pitcher's strike zone. But if you're Richard, you don't need to bring it over the plate. And we talked yesterday about expanding the strike zone, quote unquote, educating the umpire so that they understand your pitches, where they move, where they catch the corners of the plate. This is exactly the situation that we're talking about. Push it on that outside corner, make it a ball, and see if you can get a strike call. That would be the goal. If I'm Richard and I'm making my pitches move, that's exactly what I do. They tried to come in. Chapman pulled her hands in, popped it up at the infield for the second out of the inning. This an inside pitch. Look how far it is off the plate. That's what you need to do if you're Richard. It's so far in that Chapman had to turn on it so much, and then the end result is a pop-up. That's the goal. Get batters to hit your pitches. That's exactly what happened there. Savannah Price swinging at the first pitch. Can't handle it at second. Goes over the shoulder of Green. And Price is going to get on with a single. And always, if you hit the ball hard, good things can happen to you. This one just kind of a shot right towards Addie Green at second base. And here is the she can do it all player, Bella Loomis, getting the start at third base today. Lauder blocked it, but Price was aware and she swiped second base. Loomis at the plate was huge yesterday. She stepped up in the fifth inning. It was a 4-4 tie, and she broke the tie with a two RBI single. Here, Loomis, you got one ball on you. 
you know Richard can pinpoint her control. She's going to want to get ahead. To me, second pitch after a ball being the first pitch of an at-bat, I think it's going to be the best pitch you're going to see. If I were Loomis, I would have taken my hack at that. Another one right over the heart of the plate, one and two. And again, that's, that's where Arizona State needs to capitalize. If you've got a zone and a pitcher that can move the ball outside the zone and get strikes for it, you've got to capitalize on the ones that she brings too far over the plate. When you look at the mix of pitches, two good strikes low in that zone that you could drive and then getting behind in the count. Now Loomis has to battle at something that's kind of moving up in the zone. And for Richard, that's, that's what makes her good. Now she can throw her pitch. She can get a pop-up fly out because she can get these batters to miss hit, especially when she's ahead in the count. Another block runner goes. And Price swipes another bag. Price just paying attention to where these pitches are thrown. This one in the dirt, as soon as she sees it hit the dirt, she trusts her speed and gets all the way to third base. Arizona State trying to manufacture a run here with two outs, a runner on third. Well hitting the right and just foul. So when you see a hitter put a good swing on a ball like that, as the pitcher, what do you come back with? If I were Richard, a change up, <laughs> absolutely. Or a rise <laughs> ball that's kind of up in that zone. I mean, either of those two pitches are so good for Richard. And so I do feel like some pitches that she's throwing are just too far over that plate for, for my taste. I think her movement is good enough. She can spin it out being this ahead in the count. Laura head behind the plate says no go, count is full. I mean, I don't know where that missed, John. I I am an advocate for a good strike zone and I love it, but I don't I don't know where that one missed. I think that was that was a missed strike there. And way too close for Loomis to take. Payoff pitch, change up, got her looking. Virginia Tech with a 4-1 lead into the third. This is the party that every player wants to be at. It's going to be passionate softball for sure. Back to crown a national champion for the first time since 2019. They get to chase history here. The Women's College World Series returns to Oklahoma City. The action begins Thursday, June 3rd at 12 p.m. Eastern, live on ESPN. For more information on the 2021 Women's College World Series, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Top three, Virginia Tech with a 4-1 lead over Arizona State. 5-6-7 due up for the Hokies. Here's Kelsey Bennett, the shortstop. Bennett one for one, singled in the first. Cielo Meza on for her second inning of work after she Relieve the starter, Lindsay Lopez. I think Mesa's done a pretty good job as she's kind of gotten in here and she's found a way to kind of settle in a little bit. Bennett just reached for that one and flicked it into center field to start the third inning off with a single.
Second baseman, Addy Green. We welcome in the audience, the audience who just watched UCF with a dramatic win over Auburn, a game-ending double play. Let's get you caught up. Virginia Tech scored three runs in the first, one in the second. Arizona State was able to pick up their run off of a solo home run in the second by McKenna Harper. And it's 4-1 Virginia Tech here in the top of the third inning. Starting pitcher for Arizona State was Lindsay Lopez. She has already been pulled from the game. This is the reliever, Cielo Meza. Now this is day two here in the Tempe Regional. We got things started last night. Virginia Tech with the win over BYU, 5-2. to two. That ball is well hit now into right field. Hill makes the catch. For Arizona State, they got a dramatic 7-4 win over Southern Illinois, a Saluki team that was very game. They came back to tie the game up at 4. Arizona State responded and won 7-4. So we're here in the winner's bracket here in the Tempe Regional. Emma Ritter 0 for 1. She reached on an error by Loomis at third. John Schriff alongside my partner Jenny Ritter, former national champion at University of Michigan. And Jenny, what a strong performance by Meza out of the bullpen. We haven't seen her much this year. Ahead in the count 0-2. Ritter, that one will drop in front of the center fielder. And going first to third. But no, Bennett is tagged out at third off the strong re relay by Arizona State. Now Emma Ritter hits this one into shallow, or into the gap, excuse me, of the outfield. And Bennett, you're right, she's going all the way to third base. Beautiful throw by Darby Troll to get the tag. And a huge out. Now Ritter is going to swipe second base on Maddie, Maddie Hackbarth behind the plate. Virginia this is something Tech. we've seen. Virginia Tech has been aggressive these first few innings of this ballgame. That's exactly what I was just going to say. They have been so aggressive. They have to be aggressive on that base path because they have to make things happen. And we're talking about the postseason, John, where everything needs to be their A game. They've got to do and take risks that other teams might not, and sometimes that's the difference of the game. Kenzie Lauder ahead in the count, 2-0. Good cut on that one. So for those who just joined us, the starting pitcher for Arizona State was Lindsay Lopez. She's the fireballer. She brings the heat. Now the reliever, Meza, a lot slower in the circle. So the hitters for Virginia Tech are having to make this adjustment the second time around. That ball has popped up center field. Akbar makes the catch. Virginia Tech holding on to a 4-1 lead as we move to the bottom third. Welcome back to day two here in the Tempe Regional. This is the winner's bracket game. Virginia Tech with a 4-1 lead over Arizona State. We take a look at the bracket here. Winner controls their destiny here in this region. If you lose this game, you have the potential to get bounced today. After us, for this one, we'll go to the elimination game. Southern Illinois will take on BYU approximately 6.30 Eastern. The winner of that takes on the loser of our game right now. What's up, everybody? Welcome. We are broadcasting this game remotely. John Schrift and alongside my partner, Jenny Ritter. And Jenny, really the headline of this game is that the starting pitcher, Lindsey Lopez for Arizona State, was roughed up early on, didn't even make it to the second inning. How surprised were you that they pulled her so early? You know, I think they didn't have a choice. Virginia Tech was hitting the ball well. They stayed out on the, t the early part of the count. They hit the ball well, and they essentially forced Lopez out of the game, I think much earlier than Coach Ford had ever expected. They put Celio Mo uh, Meza in. Allison Royalty is not available, or that we have seen so far, has not warmed up. 
But Meza has kind of settled in. So second time through the lineup for Arizona State. Top of the lineup is the center fielder, Kendra Hackbarth. In the circle for Virginia Tech is the ACC Pitcher of the Year, Keely Richard. Richard had a strong performance yesterday in the win over BYU. BYU actually led the game off with a solo home run. Richard settled down nicely. A three-hit complete game. Now, Jenny, when we were watching this game, calling this game yesterday, we knew that Rashard didn't have her best stuff. What was the key for her to getting through that game yesterday? I just think she had to tough it out. It, she wasn't as sharp, but she only gave up three hits. So when you think about it, a less sharp Keely Rashard is still better than most. And I think that was what was so interesting about yesterday is you, she threw a lot more balls than she did or than I expected that she would have. I thought it should be more strikes. She should, got, should have gotten ahead of the count a little bit more. Coach Moore even a little bit nervous there in the early innings. And she loses the center fielder, Hackbarth, there on 3-1, gives up the walk. Now for Richard, she has just won every accolade you can think of. ACC Pitcher of the Year. She's a finalist for the USA Softball Collegiate Player of the Year. Over the course of her career, seven no-hitters, two no-hitters just this season alone. I mean, she is one of the best players in the entire country. Hill tries to lay down the bunt. And I think the difference you're seeing in this game versus yesterday when we talk about just sharpness of Keely Richard is that her pitches are moving a lot better today, which is why you're only seeing Arizona State with one run that has been plated. She's done a good job throwing her pitcher's pitches and getting Arizona State to swing at them. Richard has four strikeouts today. Hill was the first strikeout victim in the first. Something unfortunate we've seen is a little inconsistency behind the plate by the umpires. Last night was, I mean, all over the place. That was Jason Smith. He's now at third base today. Laura Head is the home plate umpire today. And I think the difference that you're going to see in the strike zone today that we didn't yesterday, it wasn't necessarily as squeezed as it was yesterday. It was kind of hard to tell where the strike zone was. Today I feel like it's a little bit wider, but then there are certain pitches that are not wide that are not called strikes, and it, it's kind of surprising to me. There's some good pitches that haven't been called strikes. Hill turns on that one inside, but yanks it foul. Looking at Farrington Softball Stadium here in Tempe, Arizona. It was about 20% capacity during the season, but for these playoffs, about 50% capacity. It is a beautiful day, 84 degrees and sunny here in the desert. This is softball weather. One two pitch to Hill. Got her to pop it up. It's in play. Can the catcher find it? Gets out of play. That water just lost that. Maybe a little bit in the sun. You see her rubbing her eyes a little bit. Those are so hard when they spin off the bat like that behind home plate for catcher to locate and then have to go catch it. Oh, speed is just nasty. Fifth strikeout of the day for Richard. Pitches like this fire me up. This is crazy good. Pulling the string on it, did not pick it up the moment it was released out of her hand. And beautifully in that corner. Oh, that was dirty. I liked it. Here comes the catcher, Maddie Hackbarth. 
Good sign for Sun Devil fans. She was pulled from the game yesterday due to an illness. The coaching staff wanted to save her for the rest of the weekend, but she did get the start today behind the plate. Maddie is the twin sister of Kendra Hackbarth, who is on first base. And for Maddie, she is one of the nation's leaders in home runs. You see, she's got 20 home runs on the season. A lot of the credit is just her offseason work. She put in the time this offseason to be ready for this year. In on the hands. That one's foul. She hired a trainer. She hired a nutritionist. She hired a mental coach. And those are the things you got to do when you want to get to the next level. And she really stepped her game up this year. This year. You know, Coach Ford says she is the type of person who doesn't want to see any of her players leave anything. She wants them to leave it all out on the field, essentially. And the, Maddie ha Hackbarth is one of those that just leaves it all out on the field every single time. You talk about the importance of her fighting this illness. She needs to be in this lineup. One, two, pitch down Broadway. Maybe a little low. Two and two. John, even if that was a little low, way too over the plate to throw to a Maddie Hackbar. And gets her with the 2 2 pitch upstairs. The sixth strikeout of the day for Richard. And this is what makes Keely Richard so good up in the zone you're talking about maddie hackbarth she has been phenomenal just around that 400 batting average and yet you can throw a rise ball her last strikeout was also on a rise ball up in that zone you have not been able to get hackbarth to lay off of that you're being successful today if you're a shark alina torres the shortstop grounded out in her first plate appearance in the first she is a threat to go deep. She's got 12 home runs, 32 RBIs on the season. If you're looking for some kind of emotion out of Richard, you're not going to find it. She has that poker face down packed. She is locked in, ready to go. Off speed. What a pitch. I mean, she gets me every time she throws at it. It's just so slow. And then that break at the end just drops in the strike zone. Yeah, no doubt. And I think that's why it's so good. She doesn't give it away at all. And if you're Arizona State, you've got to sit back and learn to drive it or just let it come in as a strike, respect it, and look for a fast pitch to drive. Fast pitch is pulled into left field. Brown with the catch. And that'll do it for the third. Coming up on the other side of the break, we'll talk to Arizona State head coach, Trisha Ford. Welcome back to the Tempe Regional. Virginia Tech holding a 4-1 lead as we move to the top of the fourth inning. John Schriffen alongside my partner, Jenny Ritter. Top four, Cielo Mesa in the circle for Arizona State. She's done a very nice job coming on in relief of the starter, Lindsay Lopez. For Virginia Tech, it'll be Darby Troll in the nine-hole spot at center field and then top of the order for the Hokies. was able to draw a walk in the second and would come around to score. <laughs> Troll just got underneath that one. And Price can't make the catch at second base. This 
a high fly ball. As Price goes back and almost loses it in the sun, spins out of her glove. You see the sunglasses and the visor just completely missed on her glove. So after the error, Kelsey Brown tries to drop down the bunt, and that gets fouled. Very uncharacteristic of Price, usually very sure-handed at second base. Now bring up Kelsey Brown, let off the game with a single. She would come around to score. She had a RBI double in the second, and she is the speedster. Can't get the bunt down, pops it up to Loomis for the first out here in this fourth inning. Let's go to Shea Cornett in the studio and check in with her. Shay, thank you so much. Fagan with a deep charge. That one is caught in center by Hackbarth. So two quick outs after the error at second by Price. Let's see if her teammates can pick her up here. And this is where I feel like we're seeing a little bit of the defense and pitching settle in for Arizona State. Mesa has done a good job this inning keeping Virginia Tech from being as aggressive as they have been. Elias, that one keeps carrying at the wall, and it is gone. Alexa Milius with a two-run shot increases the lead for Virginia Tech. We're talking about Amaza, who's given some decent innings. Milius, though, just drives this pitch over the fence. Loads beautifully, full extension. She watches it out. Two more runs scoring for Virginia Tech. They can do it all, John. They're doing it manufactured runs and the long ball. Well, that error certainly coming back to haunt Arizona State with two outs. Milius, a two-run shot, gives Tech a 6-1 to lead. What's the key to bouncing back as a pitcher inside the circle? You were so good after you give up a home run. How, do you just wipe that out of your memory? What's the key? Rounded to shortstop. Torres can't make the diving play. And the inning continues for Virginia Tech. And so this one just gets past Torres. This is a good hard hit ball, but Torres kind of shading towards second base. Doesn't quite get to that. John, in, in answer to your question, you have to have amnesia, you have to be resilient, and you have to not give up a hit after a big hit. To me, that is the, the biggest thing that you can do as a pitcher is find a way to shut it down immediately following a home run. And this is great for Virginia Tech to continue the rally. I always feel like home runs sometimes can be a buzz kill for an offense, but for Virginia Tech, they just keep rolling. Kelsey Bennett, two for two today. Now she's three for three. Bennett just continues her hot hitting. She had a home run yesterday and is now three for three today. And the Virginia Tech bats, they are alive here in this Tempe Regional. And Allison Royalty, again, not even attempting to grab her glove, go warm up. There doesn't appear to be any plan to use her in this game, even as Virginia Tech starts jumping on Mesa a little bit here this inning. Addie Green had a big two RBI double in the first inning. Macklemore getting warm in the bullpen for the Sun Devils. 
Watts well hit into center. Shortstop Torres makes the catch. Coming up on the other side of the break, we'll talk to Virginia Tech head coach Pete DeMore about the good start from his Hokies. Welcome back, Virginia Tech with a 6-1 lead over Arizona State as we move into the bottom of the fourth, and we are joined by Hokies head coach Pete DeMore. Coach, thank you so much for joining us. What's been the key to your team's hot start today? Oh, uh, our approach is pretty good, and uh, we're swinging at pitches that we should and taking the ones we shouldn't swing at. So um, I like how our misses, you know, if we're looking for a certain pitch and, and our foul balls are in the right spot, it's, it's a big thing for us. We pay attention to um, where our misses are, and, and today they're, they're missing good. In the circle, Keely Richard, six strikeouts. What's been the key to getting hitters off balance? Uh, her changeup is better than yesterday, and um, she's commanding her rise uh, more in the strike zone. Yesterday it was kind of all over the place, and today it's uh, she's missing up and down, not so much in and out. So um, it should look good. Appreciate your time, Coach. Best of luck the rest of the Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Thank you. Virginia Tech head coach Pete Demore. Appreciate you spending some time in the middle of the game. Keely Richard, the junior, ACC Pitcher of the Year on 54 pitches already, has been outstanding. 5-6-7 due up for Arizona State. This is Yanni Acuna. And there's that off-speed pitch Coach was talking about. in her first at bat and the second struck out looking. When you have a pitcher with the caliber of Keely Richard and you spot her a five run lead, she is in a very dangerous position. Two one. They're in the winner's bracket here in Tempe, Arizona. Just a little low. The strike zone has been a little all over the place this afternoon. Three and one the count on Acuna. Herself and loses her. Ball four. Let's head to the studio once again to check in with Shea Cornette. All right, Shea, thank you so much. So the leadoff hitter in this inning, Acuna, reaches with a walk. See if Arizona State can climb back into this game down six to one. Kenna Harper had a home run in her last at bat, a little half swing, low, slow roll to third. Fagan makes the play, one down. Just joining us, Virginia Tech had three runs in the first inning, jumped all over starting pitcher Lindsey Lopez, chased her from the game. The reliever came on, Cielo Meza. Virginia Tech picked up another run in the second, two in the fourth. Arizona State, their lone run, a solo home run that came in the second inning. Here's Dene Chapman, inside, 1-0. position. 1-0 count. Well hit. Into left field. Coming on is Brown to make the catch. Two down.
to second base. Miss Vanna Price singled in her first at bat in the second. She's been a really present surprise in this Arizona State lineup. Entered the lineup recently, kind of a, a coach's gut call. She was performing well in practice. And so coach Trisha Ford decided to just go with her gut, put her in the lineup. And Price, she's been paying off. Change up sails up high, one ball, one strike. One of those kids who really earned her way onto the playing field. She has really good defense. After making that last error in the inning, you know she wants to redeem herself here at the plate. Second, let off this inning with a walk. Two and one to count on Price. That's in there, two and two. And Rashard, get out of this inning on the mound. Here's the two two. Got her with the rise ball. Seventh strikeout of the day for Keely Richard, showing why she's the ACC Pitcher of the Year. Seven innings live. It is a really cool program going on right now. It's basically the red zone for softball. Chris Budd and Holly Rowe anchor our tournament studio coverage, along with analysts Jen Schroeder and Jessica Mendoza. Don't miss a minute of the action from the NCAA Softball Regionals. This show takes you to the best live action on 7 Innings Live show. You can find it on the ESPN app. You can see every game, every big moment on the road to the Women's College World Series only on the ESPN networks. I mean, it is fantastic, especially today. you got 16 regionals going on at the same time. 7 Innings Live will get you caught up where all the action is going on. Here in the Tempe Regional, this is day two. We're in the winner's bracket, Virginia Tech, with a 6-1 lead, Emma Ritter leads things off and will fly out to left field for the first out here in the top of the fifth. John Schriffen on the call here alongside my partner, Jenny Ritter. If you're wondering where's Jenny, she's having a little technical difficulty. She will be back on the broadcast momentarily as we work that out. In the meantime, I'll continue to do my best, Ben Scully, and keep you up to date on what's going on. Bottom of the lineup due up for Virginia Tech. Mackenzie Lauder is hacking that ball. Stays in play. Loomis at third, reaching in foul, foul territory for the second out. Nice grab. Wasn't sure Loomis had room, but she stuck with it. Stuck her hand out to find the padding. And you know the pitcher in the circle is going to love that one. That's right. So two quick outs here in the top of the fifth. Brings up the nine-hole hitter, Darby Troll. Troll walked in the second, came around to score. She reached on that error at second in the fourth and will score on the two-run home run. She pops that one up to first, and that one will hit the top of the dugout. Heading the count, one ball, two strikes. Mesa wastes no time trying to fire that one in there. Virginia Tech head coach Pete Moore told us his team has really stuck with the plan. They've been more selective at the plate. They've been laying off pitches like that, waiting for the pitcher to come in. He said his team's not the rah-rah kind of team. They're not going to be coming up with creative chants and cheers. He wants his girls locked into every pitch, noticing the defensive alignment. What is the pitcher throwing on the mound, on the, in the circle? 
Popped up in the infield. Catch is made by Torres and a quick 1-2-3 inning. Can the Arizona State Bats come back in this one? Welcome back to the NCAA Softball Championship presented by Capital One. We are in the Tempe, Arizona Regional with Virginia Tech. Start of the scoring off early and they have commanded a 6-1 lead as we now move to the bottom of the fifth inning. With the Sun Devil Bats coming up to the plate, John Schriffen alongside my partner Jenny Ritter. We are working on getting Jenny's mic back up on the air. She will be back with us momentarily. Starting thing off will be the third baseman for Arizona State, Bella Loomis, who made that spectacular grab in foul territory. 9-1-2 due up for Arizona State this inning. Loomis is that ultimate utility player. She can literally play every position on the field. And she doesn't even care where it is. Wherever the coach needs her to play, that's where she's going to go. The ultimate team player. She's patient at the plate. Adding the count here. Two balls, no strikes. pitch of the ball game. Bunt is laid down. That one is foul. I think we have my partner Jenny Ritter back. Jenny, are you with us? I'm here, never been so happy to be back. Oh, I love hearing <laughs> the voice. Two and one, the count on Loomis. Sends that one deep to center field, back at the wall, it is gone! Welcome back to the ball game, Jenny. Bella Loomis with a solo home run, and Arizona State now trails six to two. And what a welcome, Bella Loomis. We've talked about her a lot, just what she can do in that nine spot. For Richard, this pitch on the outside corner, Loomis just squares it up beautifully. Drives it over the fence. Outstanding job by a nine spot hitter. What is it like to have a hitter and a player of that quality in the nine hole? You know, Coach Trisha Ford talks, talks about it a lot. Like that. Yeah, she, she loves her in that spot. You talk about a, a, a round of 300 average hitter in the nine spot? Like, that's a coach's dream. She made a great play in the field. Now starts this bottom of the fifth with a solo home run. And on top of the lineup is Kendra Hackborth. North made third team all Pac-12 this single this season. Single the first appearance in the first, walked in the third. The one one by Richard. Off speed is in there. One and two. Richard's been throwing a lot of off speeds to the both Hackbarth sisters, and I think that's a smart decision. You've got some power and both of those sisters and bringing that change up in on them has been really effective in what they've been able to output here. Akbar goes down to get that one. Speedy down to first, but the play is made by Green. One down. Tough day so far for Jasmine Hill. Struck out swinging in the first, struck out looking in the third. I think you give Keely Rashard 
credit for that. Both with Jasmine Hill and Maddie Hackbarth in this game, two strikeouts apiece. And when you're pitching, you, you evaluate a lineup to know who are your biggest threats. How can you attack them? How can you get out? And for Richard, looking at that 2-3 spot in this lineup, and even Kendra Hackbarth at the top, she's done a good job against all three of them and been really successful about throwing great pitches against them and not letting them hurt her. When you're facing a pitcher like Richard, who's got a great rise ball, a great changeup, what do you look for when you step up to the plate? Anything down. Here's the 0-2. Upstairs by her. Jasmine Hill goes down for the third time today. That's the eighth strikeout for Richard. And that's why I say you got to look down. This looks so good coming in. Hill has not been able to lay off of it. Maddie Hackbar so far this game has not been able to lay off of it. That's why she's been so successful. We heard uh, Gordon Eakin for BYU yesterday talk about just laying off that rise ball is your best success against Keely Richard. He's absolutely right. We have seen some Arizona State hitters be successful against it, and we've seen some struggle. See if Hackbarth can get on track here. Struck out in her first two at-bats swinging. Here's the BYU head coach getting ready for the elimination game coming up next. We'll take on Southern Illinois to decide who stays alive here in this Tempe Regional. It will be approximately 6.30 Eastern. Man, that changeup has been so effective all day. You can tell almost with a game plan with these Arizona State hitters, they're choosing to kind of see that pitch in. I haven't seen too many of them try to sit back and drive that pitch. But for Richard, it's been in that zone. It might be something game plan changes you adjust for this game to sit on that. Comes back with the heat on the outside corner now. Richard is ahead in this count. One ball, two strikes. Giving up the home run to Loomis to start the inning. Richard has come back strong. Retired Kendra Hackbarth on the ground and struck out Hill. And there's Southern Illinois head coach Kerry Blaylock. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Just outside, Hackbarth lays off. Did she go? No, she did not, says first base umpire Steve Gould. And you have to go back and look at past at bats to me when, when you're being successful with strikeouts against batters. Hackbarth has struck out twice on that rise ball, and we have yet to really see a good inside rise ball to Hackbarth this at bat. You've got to be looking for that if you're a shard to, to execute that inside rise right here. Payoff pitch. Got her swinging. Rashard has got it going here in the winner's bracket game in the Tempe Regional. Mowing down Arizona State. Virginia Tech holding on to a 6-2 lead as we move to the top of the sixth inning. And Hokies head coach Pete DeMore has some very interesting tactics to get his team motivated. This past fall, he said the team was kind of not following the rules. He wanted to get them back focused. So he kicked them out of practice. And he said, you cannot come back for the next few days. And when we do come back, the only way I'm going to let you back on the field is if you write a one-page report about Eddie Van Halen, who had just died, and you have to give me a 10-second rendition of your favorite Van Halen song. And Jenny, it, fit, it wound up getting this team refocused, they were disciplined, and they all came back to practice after doing their homework assignment. It's such a funny thing to, to make a team do. He said it was kind of a punishment. It was kind of just like almost a team building thing in a weird way. Brown with a swing to short and a tough play is made by Torres. Got Brown the speedster. He said Mackenzie Osborne 
had the best rendition out of any of the players. She had like a full routine planned for everybody. And, and, and it really is a way to bring the team together. When you have fun together with, as a team, it becomes a bonding experience. Fagan puts a charge into that one to right center field, and it is gone. Virginia Tech with a solo home run expands their lead. It's now 7-2. I just cannot get over how well this Virginia Tech offense is firing on all cylinders. This is a pitch well up in the zone. And Fagan with the bat flip <laughs> adds another run for Virginia Tech, huge smile on her face. Again, you, this is the type of offense you have to have as you go into the postseason. Virginia Tech is making Van Halen proud right now. They showed <laughs> up today. And Coach Demore talks about that was kind of a, a fun thing for them. They're very much not a rah-rah team. They're come down to business team. Deep fly ball to right, Hill camps underneath, makes the catch. Let's check in with Shea Cornette again in the studio. All right, Shea, thanks so much for the update. Jamie Bailey steps into the box for Virginia Tech. Bailey was hit by the pitch in the first and would come around to score and singled in the fourth. Our Jenny, if you had to do that homework assignment, what's your, your Van Halen song? What's your go-to? Ball's popped up at center field. Hackbarth makes the catch. Jenny, you're on the spot. Oh, I'm doing, I'm doing right now, John, because it is about right now being good in the tournament. Hokies fans in attendance are loving the score right now. 7-2 to on top as we move to the bottom of the sixth. It's time now for the Capital One rewarding performance, and it's going to be the woman in the circle, Keely Richard. Keely Richard's pitches today have just had incredible movement. She's had pinpoint control. Her changeup has been beautiful, and she has been firing on all cylinders. This is the kind of control that we expect to see from Keely Richard. She has just been outstanding. Nine strikeouts on the afternoon. Six to Hill and Hackbarth. And she's been effective. Just 84 pitches now as we move to the bottom of the sixth inning. Four, five, six due up for the Sun Devils. This is Alina Torres. 0 for 2 today. You're right, John. 85 pitches there. Look at the breakdown of balls to strike. She has more of a balance to me. You need to have kind of a, a two to or a three to one ratio, in my opinion, strikes to balls. She's done better today at doing that and more efficient. The top five batters in the Sun Devil lineup combined one for 11 against Richard today. And again, those are your best hitters. If you can attack the top of the lineup, not let them hurt you, and really go and, and be better at forcing the bottom of the lineup to do the work, you're going to see success, no doubt. Fly ball to center field. Troll on the move. Makes the catch. One down. As a reminder, what's at stake here? Winner will move on and stay undefeated in this regional here in Tempe, Arizona. The loser goes on to the loser's bracket and will play the winner of BYU Southern Illinois that comes up after this game. So if you lose this game, you are at risk of going home today. definitely don't want your backs to be against the wall in that game. Those are the most difficult. It's better to be 
ahead in double elimination. Acuna, the designated player, struck out in her first at bat in the second, walked in the fourth. Good patience by Acuna there, low pitch in the zone. Definitely a ball. But Acuna choosing to sit back on it. The shard's been kind of living in that area of the plate. Sometimes a strike as she brings it up just a touch more. That one is well hit, but right at the second baseman green for the second out of the inning. Let's go back to the studio and check in with Shea Cornett. So much for that update. Two outs here in the bottom of the sixth. Keely Richard is just on a roll in the circle. She's got nine strikeouts on the afternoon. She's given up two solo home runs, one to McKenna Harper in the second and to Bella Loomis in the fifth. Does Harper have another one in her? Well, I think when you look at that and you just look at the summary of what Richard has done, those are kind of two bad pitches. You have taken a potent offense of the Sun Devils and not allowed them to really string some hits together and manufacture some runs. She's had some strikeouts scattered. It's really hard to put things together. You see that, the numbers that... Arizona State has. I mean, look at that, 1.94 home runs a game. They're on par for that. But the six runs per game, that's where, where Richard has been successful. And I was half expecting Arizona State to really have their bats warm up as the game has gone on. We haven't seen that yet. Instead, we've seen Richard potentially get a little bit stronger here. Two balls, two strikes, the count on Harper. Puts that one in play to the right side and it gets through. So a two out single for McKenna Harper. Continues her hot hitting today. Yeah, Harper's been heating up against Richard. She is certainly one where if I'm looking at facing her one more time through this lineup, I'm gonna, I'm gonna respect what she's been doing, where she's been throwing and, and maybe hit my corners a little bit further out. Maybe respect a walk if that's the case. But with two outs, Harper getting a single doesn't necessarily hurt you if you continually go back and, and focus on the next batter. Chapman comes through. So back-to-back -back base hits for the Sun Devils. And they've got a little two-out rally going. Down five runs here in the bottom of the sixth. And this could be the moment that Arizona State's looking for their moment to string some hits together to start heating up as we've been talking about. Again, like I said, I have expected them to start heating up later in the game. So maybe this is the time, maybe this is where they can really put something together. It's a two out rally. But good things happen when you, you hit back to back. Shard waits patiently on the mound as Trisha Ford will make some adjustments in her lineup. And she'll go to her bench for a pinch hitter as Allie Tattenall will step up and replace Savannah Price. Big moment in this ball game when you're down by five with two outs, you need the hit parade to keep going. When you put a pinch hitter in in a situation like this where you've got something going, 
your team is, has found a way to get runners on base, you expect big things out of them. You've got to have a batter up there that can change the game with one swing of the bat. For Coach Ford, it's, it's Tatnell. The tough assignment facing Keely Richard, one of the best pitchers in the country, cold off the bench with two outs. Swinging at the first pitch, and catch will be made by Bennett to end the threat. Virginia Tech in control, 7-2 lead. Let's go to the seventh. The NCAA Softball Regionals is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? This Tempe Regional got the party started a day earlier than the rest of the country. Yesterday was the opening round, brought us here to today in this winner's bracket. Virginia Tech looking strong. They could advance. And then they've got Southern Illinois and BYU coming up later tonight for the elimination game. John Schriffen alongside my partner, Jenny Ritter. And Jenny, when we first started talking about this region yesterday, the thing that stood out for you was the pitching. How about the job that Keely Richard has done now two days in a row? Well, she's been phenomenal. Virginia Tech has really been, in this regional, one of the most complete teams that I have seen. And that is on the back of Keely Richard. She has kept them in the game every single chance. It's kind of what Coach DeMore says. If Keely Richard can keep us in the game, we've got a chance. And she has kept them in the game the entire season. Kelsey Bennett hit it hard to left. That one's going to drop. Bennett is now four for four today with four singles. That's following a home run she hit yesterday. I mean, not a bad day <laughs> if you look at it that way. It's just, I, it's fun to watch hitters that are really hitting their stride like that. And you always look at the one through four hitters, the heart of the lineup, but Kelsey Bennett in that five spot has really just been phenomenal for us. So Maddie Federico will be the pinch runner for Bennett. When you got a player like Bennett, who's four for four today, do you think that you move around the lineup and possibly move her up, or you just don't mess around with a good thing? Bunt is laid down by Green. One down as the runner advances. Hi, uh, John. I'm not sure that I would mess around with a good thing. I think that there's an interesting mental dynamic of moving batters up. Put her in the cleanup spot. Is there more pressure in that spot? Not necessarily, but sometimes from a mental perspective, you can change the way you swing just by de being in a different spot. And so I think these coaches, they know their hitters. They, they know what they can do. And uh, they, they put them in the spot where they can be the most successful. And for Bennett, she's just she's, she's been great in that five spot. So Canada Davis will come off the bench and pitch it for Emma Ritter, the right fielder. Federico is the pinch runner on at second. With one out here in the top of the seventh, Davis has a chance to pick up an RBI. A lot of credit to Cielo Meza. She came into this game in the second inning to relieve starter Lindsay Lopez, and she hasn't done a really bad job. She's been hitting her spots, and she's facing a really tough Virginia Tech lineup. Yeah, I mean, I think the challenge was a great challenge for her to step in and, and really have to perform at a high level when her experience isn't really what the rest of the staff has had. And, I agree with you. She has limited what Virginia Tech can do. And I think that's, you know, again, a, a compliment to Virginia Tech because they've still been able to push some runs across. But she, Meza has done a good job. Really good job. I'm impressed. Nice strike out there to get Davis swinging. Two down. And I think just, you know, in looking at what you can do here and seeing the success or the ability from Meza to keep her team in this game. I think uh, when we're not seeing Allison Royalty and the question of whether we may see her in regionals at all, 
they're going to expect Mesa to step up and have to do her part. And, and this is a good sign for Arizona State to, to potentially fight out of this regional. You know, we could even see the body language from when she first came into the game to now. She just has that confidence about her. And you can see just as the innings go on, she's been getting stronger. And John, this is a huge stage to just step in and, and have to carry your team. It, it, it's a huge stage. And for her to come in with the kind of confidence that she has, I'm impressed. Grace Chavez is the pinch hitter at the plate for Mackenzie Lauder. Pete DeMoore trying to move some pieces around and push another run across here in the seventh inning. And look at Mesa just going after hitters quickly ahead, 0-2. Yeah, and I think with a, a pinch hitter in, that's exactly what you have to do. I think she's attacked Chavez, and I think uh, Chavez has to understand how to be in a pinch hit situation in maybe a tougher situation. Oh, in this one. Oh, oh, oh. Mesa wanted that one. Well, this is a changeup. It is right at the knees, maybe just dropping a touch low, but again, you got two strikes on you, you got a bow now. That one through the hole, they're gonna send the runner. Here comes the play at the plate. Safe! Federico gets in underneath the tag, and Virginia Tech tacks another one onto the board. Chavez, what a great job to attack and drive one through a hole. Federico's going, does not stop, gets that foot on the plate ooh just before the tag from Hackbarth comes let's take another look because the, the ball catch. beat the runner yeah Hackbarth she catches it high here and has to come down and tag you can see the foot get in there Another hard hit ball, Troll, that one gets through for a single. I think this is what Virginia Tech has done so well, is when one of their batters gets a hit, they're so good at following up with another hit this game. They have just really built on each other's success. And like we said, Mesa's limited what she's been, what they've been able to do, but in this situation, Trisha Ford just wanting to have a conversation about just getting out of the inning. There's two outs, top of the seventh. Focus on getting the next out. Let your offense come in and try to chip away at this lead. But the last thing you want to do is let more runs plate and make that deficit even deeper. Well, that 0-2 pitch to Davis, that looked like it was strike three, and it seemed like Meza was ready to get off the field. Then she gives up the RBI single to Chavez. Then Troll comes up and gives up, gives up another single. So head coach Ford just wanted to refocus her pitcher in the circle. Especially when you face the top of the lineup for Virginia Tech and the speedy Kelsey Brown. Hackbarth. Making sure that Troll stays back at first base there, not afraid to make a quick snap down the first base. Ball's put in play to the right side, but it is gonna go foul. Virginia Tech scored three runs in the first off, starting pitching Lindsey Lopez. Then the reliever Meza came on. Virginia Tech scored one in the second, two in the fourth, one in the sixth, and then another one here in the seventh. For Arizona State, their two runs came on solo home runs. McKenna Harper had a home run in the second, and Bella Loomis with a solo shot in the fifth. So we stand here, 8-2, top seventh with two outs. Ground ball to second base. And here comes Arizona State's last chance, down to their last three outs. Down by six. Let's go to the bottom of the seventh. Welcome back to the NCAA Softball Championship presented by Capital One. 
We've got a stacked sports lineup coming up this weekend. Final two rounds of the PGA Tour. You got NBA playoffs, including on coming up on ABC. You got boxing, top ranked boxing, the F1 Monaco Grand Prix. It is just a smorgasbord of sports coming up this weekend. And if you're a Sun Devil fan, you are excited because at the top of the leaderboard for the PGA Championships, one of your own, Phil Mickelson, Arizona State alum, is in the hunt. So you're gonna watch him closely all weekend. But in the meantime, in the softball, Sun Devils, their last chance. Start things off the bottom of the lineup, Bella Loomis, and then it will go Kendra Hackbarth and Jasmine Hill. Loomis with a solo home run, her last at bat. And I think Arizona State's got a deficit they've got to fight through. They've got six runs they've got to make up here in the bottom of the seventh. But I think the key has to be the same game plan as when you started the game. You've got to get runners on base, you've got to move them around, and you've got to score them. A 100th pitch by Keely Richard. And when you can string all that together, then hitting can be contagious. We've seen Virginia Tech do it this game. And that's really what they need to do here as they get to the bottom of the seventh and run out of outs and innings. What makes Richard so tough is that as the game goes on and the pitch count starts to rise, it's almost like she gets stronger. Yeah. So if you don't get or her early, getting her late becomes even tougher. 100%, and workhorses tend to do that. They tend to just warm up and get comfortable and, and get better. And that's what we're seeing with her. Two balls, two strikes, the count on Loomis. Shard in the circle. The patience of Loomis getting behind in the count, working it full. And credit to why she hit a home run her last at bat. She waited for her pitch. Here comes a 3 2. Hit out to right field, and Ritter makes the catch for the first out here in this bottom of the seventh. So top of the lineup for the Sun Devils is Kendra Hackbarth. One for two, singled and walked. You know, with how good Keely Richard is looking right now, the question is, does she pitch again tomorrow? I, I mean, I think you have to. I think you have to stick and, and ride Richard. She's so good. And if she's going to be successful, yeah, you got to pay attention to her stamina and how long she can last. But if she can stay efficient. Fly ball to left field. Brown coming on, makes the catch. Now two outs. And Richard is truly your best chance to win. I mean, they're they're jumping on her back and they're letting her carry them. And the offense is coming through strong. I think if you get a shot to get ahead enough in a game where you can give Richard a little bit of a break, there's something you can do here. But I think she throws tomorrow 100%. And why this win is so important if they can they can pull it out today. So we're gonna have a pinch hitter for Jasmine Hill to be. The freshman, Emily Cazares, coming off the bench. Last chance for Arizona State. When you think about the success of what Richard did, she took a Jasmine Hill who has been very good in the Arizona State lineup at that two spot. And 
they had to bring in a pinch hitter to give a better chance because Richard has been so good against Hill. Arizona State beat Southern Illinois yesterday, seven to four, to advance here in this winner's bracket game. But with the loss in this double elimination region, they would face the winner of BYU against Southern Illinois. Popped up. It's in the infield. Green goes back, and there's the final out of the ball game. Virginia Tech with an impressive 8-2 win over Arizona State. Jenny, what stood out for you in this win? Um, you know, as much as I want to say it's Richard, she is, as I expected, a, a phenomenal pitcher to look. What stood out to me was their hitting, their complete offense, their ability to piece runs together, I think has been outstanding.